He's a pro football Hall of Famer. Bill Parcells back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Coach? I'm doing well, Rich. How are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, I would ask how the ponies are treating you, but I already know the answer to that. Things are going well for you right now, huh? Well, we got a little lucky. We won a stakes race here uh, last Friday, so I'm happy about that. But, you know, in this horse race and like football, success is never final. <laughs> Now, it, now, when a horse wins, do you say is, that's why we, we lift all them hay or something like that? Is there a Parcells that's fray? About, that, yeah, that's about it. Yep. That's what you say to your to the horse or the jockey or the, the trainer? What do you, how are you as, the, as, a, as somebody at the top of that flow chart, Coach? Well, you know, it's a little more difficult because you can't affect anything in the horse race. And when they put the horse in the gate, you know, there's nothing you can do. Right. And at least in football, you could affect the outcome maybe somehow, you know, with your strategy or play selection or whatever, you know. Bill Parcells joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's talk Tony Romo. Um, it appears in the eyes of many that this is the end game for him, that he can't stay healthy. There are some that think he should retire. I'd love to get your thoughts on Tony Romo's latest injury, Coach. Well, you know, I, I have a, a very long relationship with Tony, and actually I just texted him um, the other night after I found out about it, and uh, pretty extensive text. And, you know, I, I wouldn't count this guy out just yet. I mean, I think when you're in your mid-30s and you've been hurt a couple years in a row, you know, those whispers all start and they're, that people doubt. And they do those things, uh, and that's just human nature. And, you know, also maybe his successor has arrived. We're, we're not sure about that yet, but it, it looks like that may be the case. So with that in mind, you know, it's you, you get to you're like a feel a little like an outsider as a player. You know, coaches still have to coach. They're sympathetic, but they got a coach who's there, and you're not there. So it's all those things, and it can kind of put you in uh, a little bit of a dark place if if uh, if you don't watch it. But I don't underestimate this young man. He's got rare toughness, and uh, I think, I mean, I think he'll, I know he's going to make an effort to get better. Now, what happens after that? He's got still conditioning after he rehabilitates his injury. He's still got conditioning time, and then he's got to get back in the flow of football. So that's a that's a pretty big task at this time of year. So if you're Jason Garrett, what are you what are you trying to do with Dak Prescott right now? Do you do you take the playbook and uh, switch it around? Do you do you make the field smaller for him? What do you do if you were uh, Garrett going into the season with him? Well, coach? not really knowing his assets firsthand, uh, I'm I'm going to try to to take what I think he does well and emphasize that and try to minimize the things that I, you know, that I feel like he may still have uncertainty about. But this is a big test for this young man because, you know, when the season starts, things get a little different and they're going to, you know, it's like the baseball player that goes around the pitchers the second time. You know, it's not the same. They, they know a little more about you. You know, they get a couple games in, the Cowboys, they see what he does and they see what he doesn't do, and pretty soon you're, they're trying to make you do what he doesn't seem to do well. And so it's a, it's a long haul, but uh, that's why these, these guys that become the premier quarterbacks are, are something special. Bill Parcells, Hall of Famer, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Jerry Jones was... Uh, nominated for enshrinement, and he was selected as potentially um, as well. He was selected as one of the contributors potentially for the next class. If he gets in, what would your bust say to Jerry's when the lights go out, Coach? Well, that that uh, I would welcome him first of all, and say secondly that uh, I think he did have a, a, a marked effect on the National Football League and the growth of the game, and I think his. His marketing um, certainly is in the forefront um, and has been one of the major reasons the league has expanded so successfully and, and developed so successfully. I don't think anybody could dispute that. And what was it like being with him when everybody thought that you could be uh, a grocery shopper that might, <laughs> uh, that might chafe under the management of the grocery store? 
Well, you know, we we had a, I think, a very, very good relationship. Uh, it wasn't always 100% in agreement, but Jerry's word is good. And when he said he was going to do something, he always did it. And that goes a long way with me. And I, he's a good listener. And... And he does have his own opinions, of course. He's been in the game for quite a while now, and that's fine. But uh, I enjoyed working with him, and quite frankly, I learned a, a lot about the other side of professional football. You know, I was always so zeroed in on the football. I, I didn't. I gained an understanding of the business end uh, in my experience in Dallas that I really didn't have when I went there. Like, like what? What in particular? that you, you gleaned? <clears throat> well, you know, he was very, very open with me on why we would, were doing something, certain, like where we would have training camp, uh, places that uh, were, were big in the marketing end, like Ford <clears throat> was one of his major sponsors. Well, Ford sells more trucks in Texas than any place else, so Ford didn't really like it when we were in California in the summer. So... He, he explained to me uh, these kinds of things and um, how you got to go about doing this thing to, to market your franchise and to keep keep things going forward. And it was very interesting. I learned an awful lot. Bill Parcells joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. A few more minutes with the Pro Football Hall of Fame head coach. We all know your history with the – uh, Army, Air Force Academy, you've spent some time uh, coaching in the military. What are your thoughts on Colin Kaepernick's protest, Coach? Well, you know, I wouldn't do it myself, but uh, hey, he has a right as a citizen to express his views however he chooses to. And so I don't, I don't look down on that. I just would say I wouldn't do it myself. What would you do if you turned around and saw one of your players sitting during the national anthem and found out the reason why was similar to Colin Kaepernick's? I would, I, I would maybe at some point in time ask him to reconsider a little bit what he was doing. I'm sure this was extremely well calculated before he did it, but I'd ask him to to think about it. And, you know, because there are there are. Uh, byproducts that are come forward out of this and hopefully some positive. But when when do you know? As, a, they won't all be. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we're already seeing some uh, disagreements, but we're also seeing a lot of agreements with it as well. When does a coach know to treat a player differently? When you know that there's rules and then there's a, there's a bending of them that's appropriate for... Well, it's not so much the bending of, you know, you can't you can't go, go dominate someone's life. You know, you're just you're just an employer, and uh, you you know you can run your organization the way you want to run it, but you know you're not allowed to to affect his uh, rights. And so he does have a right. He's within the, the the rules and regulations, and so he chose to do that. Well, I guess just and I would yeah. I wouldn't do it, but. No, I guess just in in, in, in in a situation, I guess, that's completely different, we're seeing one of your uh, your longtime acolytes, Bill Belichick, in New England where he runs his ship a certain way, and then you've got a free spirit like Gronk that's allowed to do the Gronk things and still win football games. How does a coach know when to say when with certain players and then not in that regard? Well, you know, one of the, you know, you got to, you got to, here's my rules were basically you need to be on time. You need to pay attention while you're here and you need to practice and play hard. If you do those things, probably we're not going to have too many problems. <laughs> you know, now when you, you start not paying attention and not practicing and playing hard and those kind of things and, the expectations for the coach is higher than maybe the players. That's when the coach and the players start having trouble. How do you think Tom Coughlin's going to do in the front office and the operations front, Coach? Do, do people? Oh, I think he'll do fine. You know, I think it's it's. You know, he loves football. He doesn't want to. Uh, he wants to be connected with it, and you know that's his right. I think he, 
And if he can, if he can contribute in some manner of speaking uh, with the vast experience that he has, uh, I, I'm all for it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass any judgment on anything that someone chooses to do. If there's one thing that you'd like to see changed, you could pass along to Tom. What would that be? Well, you know, it, it, perhaps the list would not be just one thing. Okay. But, so, yeah. you know, I think I think the game is suffering from the inability to develop offensive and defensive linemen. I hmm. think that's what suffers. I think the skilled people within the framework of what exists now, practice-wise, I think you can you can pretty much you know, duplicate uh, practice. But the linemen, you can't do that without blocking and pass protecting. And, you know, and I think the game, the game to the trained eye suffers because of that. Mm. Last two for you, Coach. J.J. Watt has tied Lawrence Taylor's record for most Defensive Player of the Year awards at three. And people are comparing the two. Would you compare the two? Well, they play a different position, but he's certainly, like Lawrence, a very disruptive, uh, a game affecting type player. And uh, I like I like all defensive players that the ball comes to, and the ball seems to come to him. Mm-hmm. You know, the ball finds him, and I think that's a good thing if you're if you're coaching defense. Uh, and Albany Stakes, again, that's where your horse hit it once more. One, what, what, Where did you put that name, hit it once more? Is that a tackling sled situation? What do we got here? Hit it once more. Well, I was on the phone with my trainer who was purchasing the horse at the sale, and I was driving up 95 on the East Coast, and he was in the auction, and we had a certain budget, and as we approached it, he started saying to me, we've got to hit it again, we've got to hit it once more. <laughs> And he said that, and, you know, you're going to really like this horse. We've got to hit it once more. And, you know, this is a really good-looking horse. We've got to hit it once more. <laughs> and finally we got him about 20000 over budget. And I, as soon as he said we got the horse, I said, well, his name is hit it once more. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly how we got it. And now is an Albany Stakes winner. Take, take, a look at, for, take a look for him in the Philadelphia uh, – the Pennsylvania Derby. Okay. He, he may be there. Okay. We'll keep an eye peeled on that. And my daughter turns three today. You've got three daughters. you have any life advice for me before I let yeah, you go? Yeah, they're never off the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> Are you telling me you hit it once more? <laughs> you, listen, I've got them older than you, Rich, uh-huh. and they're still on the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, you, and listen... If you take them off, your wife's putting them back on. It's simple. <laughs> well, my wife's putting her on a horse, too, Coach. That seems... Well, hey, hey, listen. You know those horses, they eat the same amount whether they run fast or slow. <laughs> I found that out. <laughs> coach, I love chatting with you. Thanks again for okay. calling into the show. Thanks for having me, Rich. Always, Hello. always. Thank you. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.